What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Busting Balls. I'm your host, Eric Pinnell. Let's get right into it. Guys, I was watching music videos for the first time in like five years last night, at least, right? And uh, man, it brought me back to a powerhouse that I forgot about. Dude, a Bon Jovi video came on, right? And I remember, I forgot how big Bon Jovi was, because a lot of people listening to this, I'm sure you're young, and a lot of people listening to this, I'm sure you're old like me. Dude, Bon Jovi was a powerhouse at one time. I, 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 dude, I seen Bon Jovi in concert, 1987, March 30th, Slippery When Wet concert, right? I go with my buddy Carl, all the women in the crowd got their hair crimped, right? There's Aquanet freaking hair up to here, you know? They always have that crown thing in the front right there, you know? It was like a cr- I don't know what that was. You ever touch a woman's hair in the 80s? I mean, it was it was hard. It was hard as like a fender on like a freaking Chevette or something, you know? But we're having a good time. We go in there, right? Skid Row is opening for him. And that's like the Skid Row album that was like that was like classic too. You know, uh, Sebastian Bach comes out with his like long blondish hair. He's like looking like a sex god and stuff. Right, they do. Uh, they do their couple, three little songs and stuff. Rem- you know, they go to remember all the ladies in the audience and start start gushing. You know, like it's like I'm gonna call my ex boyfriend when I get out of here. That type of shit. You know. So they get off. Right. A few minutes go by. They're setting up. Bon Jovi comes on. Right. Bon Jovi comes on, but it's not Bon. You don't see John Bon Jovi right away. Right. I mean, the lights go up. They start off with Pink Flamingos. Right. You got freaking David Bryan on fucking keys. You got David Bryan on keys just starting off with his little... That's how you start off. You start off with a little, 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 uh, little, little keyboard solo, right? And then you got freaking Tito Torres on the freaking drums just beating the hell out of him, right? And they do that for a few minutes with that Pink Flamingos. And then they kick right in to raise your hands and then freaking... Richie Sambora comes out and starts doing his little thing. And then John Bon Jovi comes out with his pretty face, right? John Bon Jovi... That's the one thing about John Bon Jovi. I mean, the guy had, like, movie star looks. That's why he went to the movies, right? I mean, the guy is a genius. He, you know, he had he always, he always was, like, mugging for the camera. I remember those posters in those rock magazines. He'd always be, like, you know, giving you a serious face. And then he's like, ah, I got, like, a nice smile, and let me show you. You know, he's got that going on, too. Always had the good hair. Always had the good hair, John Bon Jovi. They came out. They crushed it. You know what I'm saying? They're playing uh, Liberty. They're playing uh, I Will Die For You. They're uh, they, they, you know, playing a bunch of other middle road songs that they had. They come out playing Run Away from an album before that. That that cr- that crushes. I remember that. And then, then, then Richie Sambora gets his Young Guns hat on right there. And uh, they play Dead or Alive. And then also somewhere in there, John Bon Jovi wore this like Russian cap. I remember he came out with that like Russian, like I'm in the Russian military. Uh, you know, cap that he'd come out with the sunglasses on and like his like, you know, cut little shirt and stuff. Dude, the ladies were gushing. I mean, they were gushing for John Bon Jovi, you know? And then I, you know, had a good night. They, they freaking close out. I go home, wake up the next day, first wet dream I ever had. Go have it. You know what I'm saying? First wet dream I ever had the night after I went to a Bon Jovi concert. It might have been Bon Jovi that did it to me. I don't think so. I think it's all those women with their crimped hair. And uh, that might have done it to me, but uh, whatever, man. Those were the days, right? Those were the days. I I tell you what, another thing I was watching last night was uh, 90210. I don't know if my wife started recording it again. And uh, and people have been listening to me on podcasts for a while. I was big into 90210 also, so I ain't fronting. I used to watch uh, 90210 a lot just a few years ago on the Pop Channel, right? I mean, I was ripping through them. I was ri- I mean, there's so many episodes of 90210. Who knew? I mean, it really did follow those guys. See, I mean, first of all, when they started that show, most of those people on that show, I felt like, were like 25 or 30, and they're doing high school. It's like, what are you trying to pull off? Like, everybody knew Andrea, which Andrea always acted like she was so much better than everybody. Like, Andrea's like, I'm running a school paper, and I'm living at my grandma's house. You know, she's playing that whole thing of like, I got so much weight on me, and I'm so smart, right? But we seen how that ended up, Andrea. I we seen how that ended up, you know, with you and Jesse. But let's not jump. Let's not jump. Let's keep it in the high school years. You know, first of all, I was looking at it. You know, Dylan was always like the hot, hot piece of eye candy, right? Like that guy, Dylan was always the hot piece of ass in 90210. But if you really look at it, Jason Priestley wasn't that bad. You know what I'm saying? Like when you look at him, you go, this is a handsome guy. I tell you who was a dog, Brenda. I tell you what, Brenda. And uh, 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 freaking Tori Spelling when they were like younger like that. It's like, how did they even get on that show? You got all those. Anyways, let's not be rude, you know, but I'm just saying, Brenda, first of all, 
They're getting me to believe that somebody like Brenda could pull a Dylan McKay? Are you killing me? Brenda is pulling Dylan McKay? First of all, he's the son of Jack McKay. Jack McKay, he's very shady with his business dealings, okay? And if anybody that followed 902 would know, they know Jack McKay was a real snake in the grass. You know, but but to think that Brenda would pull Dylan, well, I wonder he dumped her in, like, whatever, and she cheated on him when she was in France, and he, like, went back to Kelly. Because Kelly, honestly, was the hotter piece of ass. Like, like Brenda shouldn't even have been in his zip code, no pun intended, Right? It should have been Kelly all the way, but I guess they had to grow up and stuff, and they had to age and stuff, you know. Kelly, not bad, man. I tell you what, even now she's aged pretty damn well, right? My God. My God. Yeah. I tell you who was hot on that show, man, was Kelly Kapowski, Tip- Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Now, that's the hot one on 90210. I mean, when she came on, that first episode, she's rolling the joint at the end of it, and she's like, I'm going to burn this J. And then I'm going to start disrupting all their little relationships and try to have sex with all their guys. And that's what she did. And that's what she did. And she did it successfully because guess what? She's a hot piece of ass. That's why. You know, I like, I like, you know, he always gets hated on with Steve Sanders, right? Son of Samantha Sanders. The, uh, you know, the freaking, um, the movie star, TV star, right? Samantha Sanders. Hmm. I like how Steve would always cheat. That's my thing. You know what I'm saying? I go, God, this guy's good at the cheating, man. And then they'd always look down on him. They always try to give you some moral thing of like, you shouldn't cheat, Steve. It's like, look, I'm getting straight A's on these freaking quizzes every week in this jack-off history teacher's class. I'm going to cheat. Anyways, we don't need to talk about 902 for 40 minutes. I could do that, you know. I um, I seen that the NFL is uh, moving to 17 games. And people are going, oh, why are they? Guess what? If people are complaining about 17 games in the NFL, guess what? The Players Association has agreed on it. They're going to make more money. They're doing one less preseason game, I guess. Now they're going to do three preseason games, which I get it. They do preseason for the actual uh, players so they can get tuned up and the teams and the coaches so they can kind of get on their game so they bring out a good product. But honestly, if they did one preseason game, maybe two preseason games, most fans most fans wouldn't even want preseason games, but they are a necessity, I guess. Honestly, you could do... Uh, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if, like, I wouldn't be mad if they just did preseason games where they don't even film it, where they just go, yeah, we just did it. You know, it's almost like a scrimmage where you can get tuned up and stuff like that and just bring the product out earlier or bring it out and, and, and do more games. And I look, again, I'm a fantasy football guy. I do know that you create more games, that you have more injuries possibly. But also the good thing is you have you have players that might be able to come back earlier. I mean, think about it. These guys are saying that they're going to be playing to like January 8th. It's going to be like the regular season. It was something like that. It was like January 8th. I'm going off memory, but I think it's a good thing. The players are going to get more. They're, they're going to have the NFL extends one more week into the year of football. So th- that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to dominate. Even when the off season for NFL is, they're still trying to dominate headlines. Like as soon as NFL's over, you know, the, it's, as soon as the season's over, a couple weeks later, they're doing the Super Bowl. A couple weeks after the Super Bowl, they're talking about the Super Bowl. They're talking about the players. A week after that, they're talking. A week or two after that, they're talking about are these players going to be able to stay on these Super Bowl teams? What players are going to be leaving as the weeks go on after that? They know free agency's coming up, so now they start talking free agency. They, they talk more about it for another week or so. They do early deals that, that they already have on the table, and they won't sign until... Uh, it's okay to sign. And then that week comes when it's okay for these free agents to actually sign the contracts. They talk about that, and then they instantly move it into draft talk. And then they start talking about combine stuff, like what they're doing now, or, or uh, our pro day stuff. First of all, these pro days, it's all a bunch of fluffy bull. You know, it's all bull. Like, you look at these pro days, they're at their facility. They're in a controlled environment. They got their guys. Nobody's rushing the passers or anything like that. Yeah, they're doing some little. They're showing off. They're you know they're they're uh, they're, they're they're flexing a little skill on them and stuff. But really, pro days are just. I mean, it's, they're just jacking off for the freaking you know the cameras. And then again, then the morning people on the sports shows and all the blogs and all the podcasts. Then they talk about the pro days. And then the draft comes up in like April thirtieth at the end of April or something like that. And then a week or two after that, they're talking about the picks of what these guys did for these teams and what it's going to do and how it's going to affect them. And then, boom, guess what? They drag that out with a couple other things because on the offseason, there's always players that get in trouble. 
and uh, and uh, with the law or something, or they, something happens, like a Deshaun Watson case, and then next thing you know, preseason's rolling out. One of the reasons why preseason might need be four games is to get tuned up, but also to get people talking about it. So it's almost like the NFL is almost a year-round sport. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, that's they want to keep it on people's lips year-round. Uh, dude, let me jump to Kevin Durant and Michael Rappaport freaking uh, uh, smoke. It looks like Kevin Durant and Michael Rappaport were kind of going back and forth with each other uh, through uh, direct message, DM for the kids, uh, say. And it uh, looked like they were getting a little heated. It looked like uh, they're talking like guys talk, you know, doing man shit and stuff. And then I guess it got a little too uh, a little too uh, t- too touchy for Michael Rappaport, which I don't agree with that. And he fucking took screenshots of Kevin Durant's uh, comments that he was making in the DMs. It was basically like guys talking like guys, like fuck you, your mother type talk. You know, not really. This isn't exactly what it was. You know, something about your ex-wife and this is this and this. And, you know, talking shit and calling each other names and stuff like that. And then fucking Michael Rappaport. It, it, like, I, I, I love hate with Michael Rappaport. You know, like, I like I like him. I think he's a good shit talker. I think he's a character. But, you know, like, this is like a bitch move, dude, that you put out DMs of just dudes just talking shit to each other. Like, this guy talks like, you know... Like, you know, like, I'm a New York guy. I I did this. I got my ear bit off. I heard you on Mike Tyson's podcast, Mike. You know, and I get it. I'm sure you are. But that's a real bitch behavior that you just did. And no disrespect to women. I'm just saying bitch as, like, that's a bitch move. And uh, with, with no gender on it. And... And, and th- th- that's a bitch move, dude, because honestly, if you read the text messages or the DMs, it looks like Michael Rapport is kind of baiting him. Michael Rapport's kind of playing this, l- let me let me stay high above the clouds. And I know people could go, well, he was just taking the high road. Nah, he knows Kevin Durant. He knows he's saying the right things to piss off Kevin Durant. And a direct message, he's kind of flying high. And then Kevin Durant's in the mud trying to get him down in the mud. And he never came down in the mud. Most men would probably go down in the mud when it's behind the scenes and we're talking shit to each other and if you read them that's what Rappaport stuff looks like and then Rappaport pops this out and and it's and look Kevin Durant it's the classic Kevin Durant has everything to lose Michael Rappaport has nothing to lose Michael Rappaport has a little bag of money Kevin Durant has a big bag of money and Kevin Durant just fell for the okie doke that's really what it came down to and uh you know he's probably going to get suspended He's probably going to get fined. Maybe he's not going to get any of these. I'm not an insider. I just, uh, I'm just a guy that does podcasting, and I read the news, and I watch the shit like everybody else in the world. But, um, yeah, it looks, I, you know, it is what it is, man. I, uh, we'll see how that plays out. The only thing is, I, I just wonder if this is going to hurt Michael Rappaport, because Michael Rappaport, uh, he goes around to the morning shows and uh, gives his take and stuff. And I just wonder if some of the morning shows in the, in the sports uh, channels aren't going to want to touch him because it's like, look, we can't have you around here because you already outed some like our athletes and our athletes don't trust you. Because, dude, you don't think there's going to be athletes like if, they, if Michael Rapport continues to go on sports shows that there's going to be athletes that are going to go on these sports shows that are going to be buddies with Kevin Durant or they're going to be uh, siding with Kevin Durant that, hey, dude, that was a bitch move and you shouldn't have done that. And uh, and they're not going to give him a little bit of heat and not give him a break and kind of like get the fuck out of here. I'm going to smack you in the face type stuff, but not really do that, but make you feel like that's what they're going to do. That could be a possibility. I think it's a bad move for both of them. Uh, I think it's acceptable. I think this is how people talk behind the scenes. I like how the I like how the internet and the world always tries to act like, hey, be kind. Like all this stuff of like, be kind. Clearly, the world isn't kind. Look at the internet. It shows you how not kind people are. The same people that are like saying not kind are the same people spitting at Trump supporters or the same Trump supporters supporters spitting at liberals and stuff like that. And however you want to stand on what side of the freaking road, you know. So with this whole let's push be kind, it's all lip service, okay? This whole we're all in it together talk that they've been talking for the last year. We're not all in it together. Clearly not. We're clearly not. Okay, so s- s- cut the shit. I know it's good for like a Walgreens commercial, and I know it's good for like a uh, State Farm commercial at the end where you do a little logo and you have a little picture of two dog uh, cartoons hugging and shit, but it ain't real life, okay? You see how mean the internet is. Let's be adults here, all right? Anyways, good luck with that, Michael. Good luck with that, Kevin. Clean that shit up, okay? You know, the best thing that they could do is probably just 
air it out in public and and probably squash it in public. I would do that. I mean, that's probably the way to do it. Do a podcast, you know, d- do a video podcast or something like that and chop it up and, and uh, clear the air, you know, because that would be the best way to move forward for both of them, but they're probably not going to do that. I also seen... I didn't know this because uh, I'm not a barstool guy. No, I, I like barstool. I, I uh, from what I see of it, you know, I, I'm just slow to the party. And uh, uh, I, I didn't know Michael Rappaport was working with barstool. And I seen a deposition. That I think's real. It might be fake. Somebody might listen to this. And go, dude, that was fake. I don't know. I, I seen a TikTok uh, th- that was a deposition. So I guess they fired Michael Rappaport. And I guess Michael Rappaport's suing him. I didn't know that. I guess it's like a breach of contract or something like that. So clearly Rappaport is burning bridges. I assume Barstool is one of the biggest sports uh, you know, uh, media companies in the, in the world right now, especially for America. So this guy got fired from them. And then now he's going, he's, he's going toe-to-toe with the, the NBA, the giant NBAs, uh, one of the best players in the world. You know, you know, that is the one thing, though, about Kevin Durant. He, that's why I think that Rappaport was baiting him and getting him, like, like basically planned, planned it. You know, where if it works out in a bad way for Kevin Durant, it works out. Uh, if it doesn't, no big deal. They're just DMing and just being nasty to each other or whatever like that. But Kevin Durant is known for this type of thing. You know, and I can't be mad at Kevin Durant. I mean, you can't be mad at a woman or a man that's like, 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 dude, that's the problem. Like, you know, you work for these companies and I'm talking about companies all the way down to like guys like uh, guys and gals like you and I and uh, all the way up into like companies like the NBA and NFL. They want people from top down to these companies to just be these robots. And it's like, look, I work for you when I work for you. I don't, you know, I'm not working for you when I'm at home on my couch or in my bed or in my car and somebody's coming at me with nasty words and then if I say something to get against them that the company is going to come after me on my free time how is that freedom how is that freedom you have no part of me when I'm out and I'm oh what I'm hurting your brand too bad bud H- how about I help your brand way more than I hurt your brand how about that with this little interaction with KD and all the other little things that athletes do how about these athletes help your brand NFL NBA MLB golf I'm talking Tiger Woods type stuff and you're gonna find me how much money do I make your brand how much money do do players like Cam Newton and uh, LeBron James Kevin Durant Tiger Woods I mean, all these guys that have stepped in, uh, 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 rest in peace, the great Kobe Bryant when he had that thing in the hotel room or whatever like that. How much money they make it, make you guys. And you're going to find them? How dare you? You are nothing without them. These are kings. These are queens, okay? I can't think of any queens, but, I mean, there's Serena Williams and then that, that, that soccer lady with the, with the uh, Duran Duran haircut that's been complaining that she doesn't make enough and did her court case and blah, blah, blah. It's like, look... Your company doesn't bring in enough money. That's why you don't make as much money. Uh, WNBA, women's soccer. Let's. It's it's simple economics. Okay. That's like a. It's 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 like a, a local burger joint complaining about McDonald's. It's like you're not McDonald's. Become McDonald's and you'll make the most money. It's capitalism at its simplest. Anyways, I don't know why I got quieter. It's because I was talking about women and stuff like that. You know. That's probably why. You know. That's probably why. Uh, quick point of privilege. Quick point um, of personal privilege. Yes. Um, this is guys, ridiculous. Uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I How is this guy not embarrassed? Say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? How is this I'm guy one not of the embarrassed? Who's very, very prone to sensory overload? Oh, you're, you're prone to sensory really overload. Chatter going on, it's making it very difficult for me to focus. Yeah. Please, can we just? And, I know it's and then all listen to this crazy to person go, chime in. Can we please just keep the chatter to a minimum? Next, it's affecting my ability to focus. Thank you. Oh yeah, Thank it's you, affecting comrade. your ability. Okay, is there a speaker against name, point chapter, pronoun? Privilege. Point of this personal guy. privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. <laughs> what is wrong with that crazy guy? Is there something wrong with that crazy guy? What is the matter with you, bud? Like, wh- how, how does that guy even make any money? Where's that? Like, like, seriously, who employs that guy? You know, and I'm not saying he should be employed, but that guy is, uh, uh, what a drip. Could you imagine, like, going, like, these guys are in people's families. Like, they're going to, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter dinner and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, my God, Craig is coming over. Yeah, you heard him on that video about saying, you know, please, gender. T- <laughs> it's like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? I, uh, you know, I uh, I don't know much about it though, but uh, the very funny uh, Adam Urbanski uh, 
sent me a uh, a thing about Nas Little X and those shoes and that 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 video that he did. And uh, no, he sent me the video, the video that Little Nas X did. And I, I don't know anything about Little Nas X besides Old Town Road and stuff like that when that was popular. And, and that's about as deep as it goes. But uh, I guess he's got a new video where he's given like the like like Satan a, a lap dance or whatever. I don't know how it's interpreted. It's a weird video, and I get it. That's it's art. I get that. But then he like follows it up with these like Satan six 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 shoes that were like Nike shoes that another company. I, I can't remember what the company's name. It's like five initials, like M something something. They took this. They took the Nike shoe and then they they put like this six 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 and they did this like Satan thing and they only did six hundred sixty six shoes and they had a real live blood drop. I guess on the shoe and the shoes were like a thousand dollars and it made a lot of headlines and i'm sure they sold them miley cyrus's dumbass did a did a did a picture with them on and it's it's just like it's just like stupid you know and um and it pissed off a lot of people and then it uh and, and then a lot of people were like they thought it was nike i thought it was nike that did it but i guess no it's just somebody taking the shoe buying it from nike and they could do whatever it was what they what they want to do with it and this woman right here explains the, now Nike, I, I I read that they're gonna sue that company that did that, and this lady explains it right here. This lawyer. So Lil Nas X, the guy that did Old Town Road, has worked yeah. apparently worked with this company. I think it's pronounced Mischief to purchase six hundred and sixty six okay, Nike initial, shoes like and repurpose them into Satan shoes, uh -huh. and now. Nike has brought a trademark lawsuit. So they got the him with trademark. Can you elaborate on what that would entail? And then listen to okay. what she says. So I'd have to read the complaint, uh, and I recommend people actually just go look up the complaint that's been filed. Mm -hmm. um, but here are a couple things I can say. One, if you purchase something under copyright law, you can kind of do whatever you want to yep. it. Um, you know, with that exact copy. Mm -hmm. You can't make other copies, but you can do whatever you want with that exact copy. Sure. However, under trademark law, if you manufacture a product and you make it seem like it's associated with another brand, Big you problem. have confused consumers and diluted that company's brand, and they can sue you for trademark. So, Lil Nas X. Boom. Right there. So that's how they got them. They, you know what? And, and, and who knows? Who knows how it's going to play out? But look, a lot of people, when this first popped out, including myself, like you see that they're Nike, you just assume that Nike's evolved with this. And then people like me go, oh, you can't do a Betsy Ross shoe because it's uh, something, something. But you could do a Satan shoe. So that's why Nike's going to go chew on their ass because it's not a good look for Nike. And uh, who knows? Little Nas X. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see how that goes down. Guys, uh, thank you for listening to Busted Balls. Thank you so much. It's been a great month. Uh, it's been the most downloads that I've ever had. It's been the most listens that I've ever had. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate everybody hitting me up and direct message and, and what up me and stuff like that. Guys, I'm on uh, I'm on all the social media platforms. Um, I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Uh, you, you know, and a few other things I can't think of right now. Uh, if you do like the podcast, please share it. If you don't like the podcast, I totally understand. You can go kick rocks and uh, things good. Hope you're grabbing asses. Uh, please be safe. Thank you guys for listening to Bust the Balls Podcast.